Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your divine inner artist and discover the joy of painting outside the lines. And so welcome, I'm so glad you're here for episode 11. In this episode, we will be exploring a little bit more about color and the way color was used by a particular group of artists at the turn of the 20th century called the Fauves. It's a French word, it means wild beasts. And what they did, their main kind of um, message and, and what the movement, the first movement of the 20th century was about was color as the subject. And similar to arbitrary colors, but really like taking landscapes and having bold, intense colors that might not necessarily reflect reality. Now, during that time, you have to just kind of Go back in your mind and, and you can do the research and look at these artists. There's lots of information. I'll put up a couple of examples here. Um, but the Fauves were, that was a very radical thing for them to do because people were painting, you know, traditional landscapes, traditional portraits, uh, traditional still lifes. So, to come out and to, to make everything bright and bold and, and very painterly and exciting and kind of um, rewrite the rules and invent their own game and create their own way of painting, a new convention of painting, a new style, a breakout, um, was very bold and that's it's a very important movement because it led the way for many more modern artists uh, and contemporary artists today. To, to paint in the way that we do, and the abstract artists and, and all the movements that came from the early 20th century up to now. So they were very brave and ambitious and this happened in Europe in France. And so we're going to uh, create a landscape today and paint using bold colors, again sort of using our emotions and letting the colors speak for themselves, letting them be the subject. So it's really about the color being the subject, and and the subject will be a landscape, but the color will, will stand out. So for example, this painting to my right is a landscape. I painted it when I was studying at a university, and this painting was uh, copied, or I, I was inspired um, by a photograph I took when I was on a trip in England and I was in this place called the Cornish Moors in a place called Cornwall, in a region called Cornwall. And I was visiting a friend and we hiked around and there were horses, wild horses, and, and these are three stacked rocks. And basically this is blue sky and green and then the brown rocks, right? Or the gray rocks and then all these rocks and the vegetation is mostly green. So. This is a, a perfect example of like a Fauvist style painting because it's all <laughs> arbitrary colors, colors that you would normally see in reality um, on the, you know, when we look out with our, our eyes and see the, the blue sky and the green grass and the gray rocks. This was like a twist on the theme and taking a landscape and turning it into an expressive painting where color becomes a subject. So, the supplies you will require for this episode are the following. Uh, your paints, and if you're along with me and using the gouache paints, have those out. I'm using my watercolor paper, Mike McCanson. It's a cold press, kind of rough watercolor paper, size 12 by 16. And a pencil, I went out and got a new, really cool, one of my, my favorite erasers, Stadler. And I'll be putting this up on my supplies list as well. This is a really awesome plastic eraser. It has a really clean uh, erase. And your paintbrushes, container, spray bottle, palette, palette knife, towel, apron, and especially for this episode, um, a photograph. Now, a landscape can be something that you take, a photograph that you took, like I took this painting, uh, picture and I'm going to create a painting out of it, but I took this picture, it's an ocean landscape, it's a seascape with some awesome rocks and so we printed it out black and white, boom. You can also get pictures out of magazines 
Um, but the main idea is a cutout or a photograph, original photograph, of a landscape. It's something you feel confident and comfortable in drawing because what you're going to do is a drawing from the, the photograph or the image of your choice. And it does not need to be perfect. It does not, I'm not going to get all these people. I already know I'm not going to probably put the people in. I'm just going to follow the lines. I'm going to get my shoreline and, you know, just selectively draw what I would like to paint today. And so that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to start to draw and I'm going to eyeball it. I'm just going to put in my basic shapes that I can see here with my eyes. And I'm also kind of enlarging it a little bit. And it's, like I said before, it's not going to be exactly, it's going to be an inspirational, what I would call a source image. It's an image to get the idea. It's the image to get you started. It's somewhere to start. It's like a launch pad or a diving board. So there's my cliff, or it's a, it's a rock formation out in the ocean. And then I have uh, this big rock over here coming out. And then I have my sand. It goes kind of at an angle. Like this. And then I have my bottom of the rock where the water is. This is where the water, the water and the rock meet. And that formation. And there's this cool little doorway. And that's mainly why I chose this picture because I love this beautiful formation in nature. It's incredibly magical. And then the rest of the rock here, it kind of connects to that rock. So, oh, and then there's the horizon line right here of the ocean in the background, which is really cool. Okay, so kind of eyeballing it. If you don't like something, you can use your little eraser now. I haven't really been painting, uh, drawing with an eraser lately, but I can use it a little bit now. Now, this is a very light sketch. I must mention, uh, you will be painting over it, and at the same time, uh, yeah, light enough to where you can paint over it if you're using a light color like yellow. Oh, these are really handy too if you ever pick up one of these. These are brushes that you can whoosh, just get rid of those uh, eraser little guys. Okay. So, not necessary, but super fun. Okay, so now I'm going to start to paint. And what you can use for your paint palette, your, your schemes, is, of course, any of the uh, five color schemes that we've gone over, or the six, really, including arbitrary colors, um, or just whatever you're feeling right now. So mix and match. So as you can see, I have placed some of my colors on my palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and get start, get started mixing and get this pain on the road. Okay. Um, and remember, you this spray bottle is so helpful. It really hydrates these paints really well. Okay. Um, let's see. So I've got this nice green, and I'm gonna bring it into. Um, so no major plan here. I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna have the, the sand. Oh, and I'd like to put some of these little seaweeds. I'm noticing there's some seaweeds. Bloop. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna put in my green here, and I'm gonna kind of paint in this painterly, fauve style. Optional, but kind of fun. Also fun. To do now, it's also nice to come in and uh, ooh wee, look at that, and uh, oh yeah, there's some really nice greens here. Um, where, when you have a black and white photo, you have the darks and the lights, so you can play with that as well, since you know about shading. So I'm just going to show you a for instance, if you choose. 
Um, but just to show you on my example, the, the rock is lighter here and darker here. So I could use this for reference, have a shade of whichever color I'm going to use, and more of the tones and the tints in here. Lighter up here, tones and tints, shades, shade. So one great thing about a black and white image, source image, is having those values dialed in and it's like a key, it's like a shortcut to help you paint your painting using our tints, tones, and shades. So just another layer of possibility. Uh, I'm gonna stick with my sand here. And I have my water. Uh -huh. I'm starting to see what I'd like to see happen. Okay, and I've got these awesome seaweeds, so I'm going to just draw those in again with my brush here. Bring some tints in. And you can also use your spray bottle, remember, directly on the paper. So I'm going to do that. That will blur the edges. It'll give you some moisture directly on the paper to get your strokes nice and, well, it's smooth. It's easier to paint, basically. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in with my ocean. And I was thinking for this ocean, to do the yellow. Seaweed. Okay. And my yellow, 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 yellow ocean. Brush. Okay. There we go. So my yellows. Got the whitewash here. The whitewash, I'm going to make a light yellow. And then the ocean, a little darker yellow, out further. laying down color. Woo.
Okay, so I'm using my spray bottle to kind of paint with here. And now I have a fairly wet piece of paper. And I will turn it around, but I'm not going to be able to lift it up right now. It's a little too wet. I did spray it. And I'm using my finger too to kind of finalize my edges here. So as you can see, I've completed my Phobos style painting, uh, emphasizing color as the subject in a landscape composition. Um, it's really too wet for me to hold up and show you this time, this time. So I'm just gonna do my best here to show you, but it does have a lot of, since I sprayed it, it's got a lot of water and liquid and hydration and, and I want it to dry. So I'm gonna leave it flat. Um, but basically this is an exercise, this is supposed to be fun and stretching our boundaries, going to our edges, seeing what's possible and playing with our paints and colors and brushes and getting into the studio and having a good time, really dedicating this space and this time for you to explore your divine inner artistry and to express yourself and have a great time. And so I encourage you to continue to watch, please subscribe, share with your friends you can have art parties you can you know however you want to share this up my series is my channel i'm completely open to that and i thank you for watching and until the next time i'll see you in the studio